Eric Young and Matt Hall of Cased Online. It is 29 degrees out here in Lawrence, Kansas, but we're tough. We don't wear hooded sweatshirts. We're grown up men, as some <laughs> coaches would say. Derek, another team that was grown up today in men was K State. 38 10. Wildcats over the Kansas Jocks to improve to 6 and 2. We'll go drive by drive in segment one like we always do on the KSO Sunday show, which is brought to you by People State Bank and Legacy Insurance. But before we do that, Derek, a huge win, of course, to spend some time talking about how important this was for the Kansas State program. Yeah, it showed a, a really great deal of maturity to respond from the Oklahoma game. A uh, massive upset against the Sooners last week. Respond by defeating KU this this week. Uh, and really was a close game, 38 to, 38 to 10. And <laughs> I can't. Derek Young and Matt Hall of K-State Online from Lawrence, Kansas, where K-State just beat KU 38 to 10 in the Sunflower Showdown. This is the KSO Sunday Show brought to you by People State Bank and Legacy Insurance. We'll go drive by drive here in segment one and explain how K-State dominated the Jayhawks. But before we do, Derek, just in a general sense, how important was this win for the K-State program? Well, it was massive. You have to respond to that Oklahoma win, a massive upset to show your maturity and see how much you've grown up in the time that Chris Kleiman has been head coach. And it looks like a lot. They just didn't you know, beat KU by a small margin. They dominated the game. They had the running game going. Uh, the, the first unit on the defensive side of the ball did not give up a touchdown all day so they just thoroughly dominated the Jayhawks and not only is all that true they're now bowl eligible eight games into the season exactly right that's the crazy thing is with four games left they've already surpassed last season's win total and have a lot left to play for like I said we'll go drive by drive here and kind of walk you through this game as Grant Flanders plays highlights from the Sunflower Showdown which again was dominated by K-State didn't take the Wildcats long Derek they forced a three and out on Kansas's first possession they get the ball back it's basically all run plays as K-State gets the first points of the game with 7.21 left in the first quarter. It was a one-yard Skylar Thompson touchdown run. Probably the big play on that drive, a 34-yard uh, speed option keeper to the right for Skylar Thompson. The Wildcats are on the board, 7 nothing with 7.21 left in the first quarter. A few things there, the speed option, all every time to the right side of the field, something that KU never had an answer. They could have ran that thing 32 times today. It would have probably picked up 32 first downs. It was that effective. Going back to Skylar Thompson running the ball, seven first downs this season, or seven touchdowns in the last two games this season. There was a lot of joking in the press box, even on third and 22s, like just run the speed option. It will work. Kansas does respond. It feels like a blowout this game, and it was the whole time. But Kansas did respond early. A Liam Jones 34-yard field goal that uh, was just less than three minutes for that drive, made it 7-3 with 450 less in the first quarter. But K-State's defense, Derek, does what it did a lot against Oklahoma. They let a team get in the red zone, or at least close to the red zone, and then no touchdowns for the Jayhawks there. Yeah, it kept them out of the end zone. And little did we know that KU wouldn't score again this game until under a minute left in the entire game. It was shocking to me, of course. This K-State scores the next five scores of this game, whether they're touchdowns or field goals, four touchdowns and one field goal. Harry Trotter, Derek, gets the start at running back today, has a really nice game. He gets a touchdown on K-State's next possession as he goes in from nine yards out to make it 14-3 K-State with 14-54 still left in the second quarter. Real quick, Harry Trotter carried 20 times today for 92 yards and a touchdown starting in place of the injured James Gilbert and Jordan Brown. Yeah, good game from Harry Trotter. Almost five yards a carry today. That'll definitely boost his average up uh, for the season, and that kind of gives us a, a chance to talk about the injuries a little bit, at least in the backfield. Jordan Brown practiced on Wednesday and Thursday. James Gilbert only practiced on Thursday, so not totally surprising that they were limited or didn't play today. Jordan Brown only saw two snaps. Got a carry on both of those snaps. James Gilbert didn't play at all. They were considered game time decisions, so we have to think that they'll probably probably be in play to play next week against the Longhorns in Austin. I would think so too, but very interesting to note because that's a huge game and you want to be at full strength or as close as possible. That was with 14.54 left in the second quarter when that Harry Trotter touchdown made it 14-3. There were no more points until the last play of the second quarter or the first half as Blake Lynch knocks in a 39-yard field goal to make it 17-3. This was set up by a K-State turnover. I believe it was a Daquan Patton perhaps interception at this point, not the Jared McPherson one. Either way, K-State did a nice job defensively today. But the Wildcats did have some clock management issues perhaps in this drive. Either way, they go into halftime up 17-3 over Kansas. Yeah, it was good just to come up away, away with points on that drive and go to the half with the momentum. 17-3, get the ball back first in the second half and I think that was also maybe two drives after a drive that fell apart because of penalty right. so the, you know going to halftime with a 17-3 lead you probably do feel like you should be up 24-3 perhaps 31-3 just thoroughly outplaying the Jayhawks at that point 
but you'll take the three and go to the half happy and get the ball back first in the second half. No doubt about it. You referenced penalties. You may have had the tweet of the day. There's a lot of good tweets. Maybe it wasn't. I thought it was a great tweet. At one point, I think late in the third or early in the fourth, Kansas had 107 yards of total offense. K-State had 107 yards in penalties. Uh, interesting stat for sure. But it is 17-3 at the half. We think K-State's in control. But, of course, there's still that concern that if Kansas comes out and gets a score early in the second half, it's a one-score game all of a sudden. The Wildcats don't waste any time, really putting Kansas in a lot of trouble. Skyler Thompson scores again from 12 yards out. They had the ball first. They scored first in that drive. So with 10.52 left in the third quarter, K-State already leads 24-3 over the Jayhawks. Yep, and KU obviously we know is not going to score until the end of the game, or Les Miles is very insistent on letting his son score a touchdown and calling timeouts to do so. So, uh, And then the offense gets rolling right out of half. That's what you needed. So kids, they just will control the ball the rest of the second half very well. Look, I'm going to jump straight to that because I thought it was ridiculous what Candace did at the end of the game, and I tweeted about it too. It's the last score. It wasn't relevant to the game, so I'll mention it here, then we'll go back and talk about the scores that mattered. Kansas down 38-3 to with less than a minute left, calls three timeouts, or at least two timeouts, to run two different sons of Les Miles three times towards the end zone. They ran the fullback, who's his son, once. They ran the backup. Actually, number three quarterback, I believe, they skipped the backup and went to his son, ran him twice. So they did get a Miles touchdown late against K-State to make it just 38-10. I thought that was interesting. And D.Y., I'll bring that up. I don't know if a team's going to love that a coach went so out of his way to make sure one of his sons scored late against K-State in a blowout loss. It definitely will be an interesting item. I'll at least be interested to see if that conversation or discussion is broached at all because it definitely seemed very blatant and obvious to everyone that was in attendance that that was, you know, the chief goal was to get Manny Miles into the end zone or Ben Miles in the end zone. A lot of Jayhawks played a lot of snaps today who probably deserved an opportunity to score there over perhaps those players. Not that backups don't deserve their chance, but they let other guys get him down the field, then went to the Miles Suns to get in the end zone. It didn't matter because K-State scored again with 12-18 left in the fourth quarter. It was 24-3 as we go back in time to where we were. It's Skylar Thompson again from four yards out. It's now 31-3. And you say to me after this, D.Y., after it's 31-3, that this is about to get out of hand perhaps. Yeah, it's about. I said it was about to get out of hand at that point. It, it probably was already out of hand. And then Soon we'll see Tyler Burns get some action as well, and I thought that was a great story. A Kansas kid in the Sunflower Showdown, someone that's probably fought a lot of adversity in the last 18 months, of course, and he's able to score a touchdown, and, and I don't know. That's just a great moment to me, especially for a Kansas kid inside the Sunflower Showdown. Oh, I think it is too. Tyler Burns, I, I kind of joked in the running diary, K-State goes to its fifth running back, you know, up 31-3 late in this game. I think Tyler Burns just carried it twice. I want to say get 18 yards, his first carry 14 for a touchdown, the second made it 38-3. For all intents and purposes, you know, that was really the end of the game. Kansas does get a score late. Uh, with a Miles touchdown to make it 38-3. We're going to come back here in segment two, talk to a number of Wildcats, talk to Chris Kleiman. We'll talk to Derek Moore in segment three after K-State beat Kansas 38-10 to in the Sunflower Showdown. This is the KSO Sunday Show, brought to you by People State Bank and Legacy Insurance. You know, I think we are a, <clears throat> we're a disciplined, hard-nosed, um, well-coached football team. I mean, I think that that's, that's what sums up our, our team and this program. Uh, uh, I'm so thankful. Uh, I've, I've never been, you know, more. My eyes is open today to the type of football program we have here at K-State and the tradition and the people we have um, and how many fans we had here today. Uh, it's truly special. Um, super proud that I could bring bring a, a win back to this uh, university and, and program um, and, and fan fan base. You know, it, it, it's huge. I know how much it means. I'm not from Kansas, but I grew up in Missouri and um, always, you know, was on the other side of the Mizzou and Kansas rivalry, but um, you know I know how much this means. I know how much this rivalry game means to the K-Staters um, in this world, and I'm just very thankful that I can play a small part in the victory today. You know I really appreciate the Kansas State fans. You know they travel so well. You know especially Lawrence, uh, just for it being so close. You know there's so many K-State fans in the, in the, uh, in the stadium. That was, that was just a good feeling having so much support out of the game. I mean, it was very rewarding. You know, it's always rewarding when you win a rivalry game like that. So the coaches they hopped on it all week. Forget about what we did, what we did last week, and you know, what I'm saying start the process from Monday to Tuesday to Wednesday to game now. So I mean, they did, did a great job, and we seen what we did today too. So the whole process is just one one day at a time. Uh, great effort by our guys today. Uh, it was a, a four-quarter game that uh, I thought we needed to control the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. That was a challenge to the guys on, on Monday uh, is to control the line of scrimmage. And the other big thing is 
uh, not to worry about the results. Don't worry about anything that you can't control and just focus on the process of, of winning each day and uh, attacking Monday to get to Tuesday. And uh, I, I told the guys before the game, I told the guys at the end of the game, do not be a results-based individual. Do not be a results-based program. Be a process-based program and process-based individual. And if you do those things and attack it on a daily basis uh, and, and stack good days, you got a chance to be really successful on Saturday. So uh, really pleased with the entire football team. It was uh, our, our best football game uh, of the year, all sides, uh, OD and special teams. What were your thoughts on, on how this defense played against a, a pretty good offense? Yeah, it was our best performance. Uh, we tackled really well. We, we, you know, surrounded the cup with on, on Puka because he's a phenomenal football player. And we just didn't give him a whole lot of daylight and lanes. Uh, we disguised a lot of coverages. I thought that that were confusing to the guy uh, to the, to their offense. Uh, and then our our D line got after the quarterback. So that's all three phases playing really well. For you to do what you did today, running the football without basically your top two running backs, that how impressed were you? Uh, so pleased with the offensive line, tight ends, fullbacks, because you're right, we didn't have James, didn't really have Jordan. We uh, thought they would be a game time decision, and uh, uh, Jordan tried to play, couldn't do it. James couldn't get through warm ups, and uh, we always say the next man up, and, and you, we've talked a lot about the depth we have at running back, and, and so pleased with Harry, uh, Tyler, Joe, and then obviously we uh, used Skyler quite a bit more. Coach, can you talk about Skyler, please, the job he did today? He, he was great. You know, I, I tell everybody all the time, I love the kid because he's such a competitor. Um, he's a winner, and whatever he's asked to do, he'll do. Uh, in this game, he was asked to run the ball a little bit more. We we ran a lot of option, and we thought we had some some advantages running the option game. And he made a couple of big plays with his feet early, and then pitching the ball, but. Uh, uh, great, great uh, job by Coach Mess and the offensive staff designing made, the schemes. What made you so effective against Carter Stanley today? Uh, for starters, I have a great appreciation for Carter Stanley. I think he's a tremendous football player. He's a great competitor. Um, visited with him just briefly after the game. Told him uh, how good a player I think he, I think he is. Uh, but I just think we confused some, him a few times with some coverage looks. The interception that DeQuan had, we, that was a look we hadn't shown this year. Uh, and then we did a good job of you know, putting pressure on him. You know, we just stayed relentless after the quarterback. Do you have any sort of update on AJ? I noticed he's on crutches. Yeah, it was, we think it's a, it's an ankle sprain. We it's, we don't believe it's a fracture, but um, obviously it's really early in the process. How much is the collective confidence of the defense grown over the last three games? Uh, I think the collective confidence of the football team's grown over the last three weeks because uh, you know we we keep getting better. We keep progressing and. and you don't know when your time's called upon Harry Trotter and uh, whoever else, uh, 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 Kiwi today, because he played a lot more when AJ got hurt. But I just think as a, as a football team, we're continuing to improve and get better. Uh, but obviously, to answer your question defensively, I thought we played really well. Getting a bowl berth, is that just part of the process for you? Um, now that you say that, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's a step in the, in the right direction. We have a lot of games left. Uh, and we're not going to worry about the results. We're just going to attack this week with Texas, and we're going to have another uh, tough game on the road. But uh, we'll, we'll just try to hit Monday and, and be as good as we can on Monday. We asked you a bunch. Into running the game. I, I'm curious if you had any consciousness of the atmosphere at all before the game. And you know, that's a good question. I know that we had a, a great uh, showing by Kansas State fans. I, I, Kansas State fans came out in droves. They were the loudest crew, in my opinion, just because that's what I was listening to. Uh, you know, I, I, I know it was a great atmosphere. I couldn't tell you all the things. I just looked when we were coming out the sea of purple, which was really cool. As a follow-up to that, I mean, you, you, you're you bowl eligible, but you probably see some progress on the other side of the line. What does that say about this future rivalry? Uh, they're a good football team, and I, and I told Les that before the game, that uh, they're doing some really good things. Uh, especially offensively, and I thought they they played well. They took some of our deep shots away on defense. It, it's a it's a healthy rivalry because both both teams have gotten better, and both teams uh, I think are gonna you know they're gonna they're gonna win some games still uh, in this league, and uh, have a tremendous amount of respect for us. How frustrating, how frustrating were the penalties? Today? Yeah, they were frustrating in the first half, and then we then we talked about it at halftime um, and, and cleaned it up. The personal fouls I, I, and those. I, that has to end. We, we can't have those. Uh, I thought we were better in the, in the second half. Uh, we'll have to look at the film on the holding. If we were holding and, and they called it, then we were holding. You know, sometimes, um, you know, it's a tighter called game, and so that's something we just we have to look at. We have to we have to clean it up. Those uh, uh, 
Uh, we probably could have had a couple more scores, but they were taken back because of our hold. Trey Deshaun, two sacks. Is that as impactful as you've seen him be up front this year, particularly as part of the pass rush? Well, he's a disruptive guy, and he's a, he's a Kansas kid. This game's really important to him as, as a senior. Uh, and I appreciated his leadership. He was one of the guys that talked before the game, and, and when Trey talks, people listen. Uh, but he's a disruptive, dominant uh, football player that uh, uh, played at a really high level today. It's like the first game that uh, you guys have come out of the third quarter and really done a good job. How pleased were you with the team's ability to do it at the end of the day? Yeah, well, we had some good drives in the third quarter. You know, taking nine, nine plays and, and 75 yards to start, that was huge. Um, you know, when we deferred and, and we were able to get stop and go up seven to nothing right away. Uh, and then the, to start the second half with a big drive, and then you know just we flip the field with some. You know, those are turnovers in my mind when they're going for it on fourth down and they don't make it. Those are big time turnovers, and we were able to capitalize. I and we asked you so much about moving on from Oklahoma. Now that the week's over, and you look back at it, how was the prep from this team this it was, week? It was great, and uh, we didn't talk anymore about Oklahoma after uh, we had our awards on Monday, and we said we're turning the page. And I keep telling these guys, whatever you did last week has no bearing on the next week and you can't compare scores, any of that stuff. You have to attack it on a daily basis uh, to give yourselves a chance to be successful. What did you like most from Harry today in the backfield? I, I thought his vision was much better than it's been, uh, but I also attribute that to the fact that he took all the reps of the ones all week because James and, and Jordan didn't uh, take many reps. So when he had all those reps, I, I think he saw the things a, a lot better and he was running through some arm tackles and. and you know, the thing that doesn't probably get mentioned, guys, is uh, for I don't know how many weeks we, we didn't turn the football over. You know, when you don't turn the football over, you hold it for 38 minutes and you rush for 300 yards, typically good things are going to happen. What did you like about the option with some of your personnel groupings? Uh, just we thought we had them outflanked. And so, uh, and, and we're not a big option team. You can go back and look at Coach Mess for for every amount of years. And just not that, it's not what we do, but we just saw an opening there. Uh, and we took advantage of it, and uh, I thought Skyler made some really good decisions. In what ways can the defense even become better? Well, we have to get better. You know, for starters, the uh, penalties, um, continuing to work on tackling. We probably missed a few tackles. Continuing to work on uh, on our landmarks and, and drops and coverage. I mean, we 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 know that's the one thing we talk about. We can continue to get better as a football team. How concerned were you operating with for big play potential other than Puta? No, really concerned because they that's the thing we talk about. They've been getting a 60, 70 yard pass and multiple ones against everybody. And uh, you can't just fear and say, I'm going to play soft all day. But it was something that we made a conscious effort of. I thought Denzel Goolsby, uh, Rome in the middle of the field, he may not have made a ton of plays, but he took a lot of things away uh, because Denzel is just such a smart player. Is it time for one more? How have you seen Skyler mature? He came off such a great game against Oklahoma and then comes here in the big rival game. How have you been able to see him remain even keel, even, even though there was opportunity for him to have left down the day? Yeah, just, just preparation. You know, just continuing to prepare every day. And, and we didn't have to throw it that much. We threw it 16 times. And, and I know he scrambled sometimes, but he knew the running game was working for him. And so we just we kind of rode that. But Skyler is just managing the game and leading our offense. Uh, as well as uh, as I can expect, I'm so happy and so proud of the kid. Coach Clamman keeps on uh, talking about the process. Yeah. You guys are entrenched in this process. Is it any surprise that he, you know, has won national championships based off of this process that you talked no, about? No, I mean, the more I'm around him, the more I understand why he's had so much success in the past. I mean, he, he's a progress-based uh, guy, focused on one day at a time, one game at a time, you know, one quarter, one half. Like, that's... That's what he preaches to us, and it's uh, it's it's a very valid, um, you know, plain way to look at football, but also just life. Like, you can't look you too far in the future. Um, you know, we had a at the chapel service on Friday or this morning. Um, you know, our chaplain was talking about just looking at life through the windshield instead of the rearview mirror. You know, you got the rearview mirror in the car, <clears throat> but that's for you know learning from the past, learning from your mistakes. But you got to keep your eyes in the windshield. You got to keep on looking at what's ahead, not, but not behind you. Because mm -hmm. what, what's in the past doesn't matter. So um, I thought that that really stuck with me, and it goes along with what Coach Plyman preaches to us. So uh, it, it's huge for us, a uh, huge win. Like I said, I'm super thankful just to be here, uh, be part of this football program, this team. Uh, Kansas State means a lot to me. 
Um, and I know it means a lot. This, this win means a lot to a, a lot of people. So uh, I'm just thankful that I was able to, to bring a win to, to K-State. Then it's a rivalry game. You're going to have a little trash talk here and there. You know what I'm saying? It didn't get too out of control. But it's a rivalry game. That's the nature of it. It's exciting. You know what I'm saying? We got both teams, both sets of fans all into the game, too. So it was a great game, man. It was a great game. Great atmosphere, too. You just passed last season's win total with four games left. Like, what does that mean to you at this point of the year? Yeah, it's definitely great. You know, having six wins and uh, knowing that we're going bowling, uh, you know, in December or January is a great feeling. And, uh, but, you know, uh, we just have to put this put this one in the past and get ready for Texas. Third and final segment of the KSO Sunday show from inside Memorial Stadium here in Lawrence, Kansas, where K-State beats KU 38-10 to for the 11th straight win in this series for the Wildcats over the Jayhawks. Derek, in the recruiting notebook this week, you talked about this being probably the most important game for K-State, even more than Oklahoma last week. It's the thought I think both of us have shared throughout this. K-State's won them both now. So how meaningful can this win be, not in an immediate you know, commitment perspective, but in recruiting in general in the state of Kansas and surrounding areas for K-State? I think it's significant just because of where Kansas State wants their foundation on the recruiting trail to be. That's in the state of Kansas, in the state of Missouri, and in the Kansas City metro. This game means more to those kids than it will be from kids out of the region. So if you want your foundation to be in that region, then this is a game you have to have. And they got a 38 to 10 in convincing fashion. And, you know, a lot of their targets, a lot of their commits are going to be watching this game and they want to see a good showing. And they got it. And it's also one of those things, too, where I thought it was definitely more uh, – important than the Oklahoma game because everything that you did against the Oklahoma game upsetting the Sooners you know in Manhattan it probably is undone if you can't beat your rival the following week some a program that most would say is inferior to K-State well said I mean this kind of proves it we all thought the Oklahoma game was huge but if you couldn't come to Kansas and beat KU here would it really matter not only do you do it but you do it in front of KU's best crowd in probably 10 years in such a dominant fashion Derek I want to ask about each side of the ball a little bit let's start on the defense they give up 10 points today three until the very end when a number of backups were on the field for both teams of course I never would have thought K-State would held KU three, to three points today. I think not only is this K-State's best defensive effort of the season, like how good was it in general? It was probably their best performance, you know, for any unit yeah. the entire season. I, K, I had KU scoring 37 points. KU's offense was, I mean, approaching a buzzsaw the last two yeah. weeks, and that's not hyperbole. They were scoring on anyone and everyone for the past two or three weeks, and it was just an offense that was clicking and finding, you know, all the right spots. And K-State just – didn't even allow them to have any momentum just that they didn't cross midfield all that much and when they did they came away with a field goal or turned the ball over or turned it on down so every everything that KU threw at K-State just didn't work it was funny that Les Miles said that you know it was everything that they did and nothing necessarily that K-State did not giving the opponent any credit which is a weird angle to take I think after a performance like that where you're manhandled and he said they probably should have thrown the ball more so just interesting answers from KU's head coach to that question. Let's flip it to a team that did not need to throw it very much today was K-State. As I joked in segment one, Skylar Thompson wasn't sure if they'd call a pass at some point in this game. Derek, I know Kansas is the 123rd best rush defense in the country. I know they're really bad against the run, but still, K-State now, no James Gilbert, no Jordan Brown. After running for 213 against a good Oklahoma defense last week, goes for 300 today. What's happened all of a sudden with this offensive line in this running game for K-State? Yeah, they almost ran for 400 yards without Jordan Brown or James Gilbert, the top two backs. I think some of it is finding some running game success with the quarterback, Skylar Thompson. A lot of that came against TCU. Some of that came against Oklahoma. We saw it again today. I think today was probably mostly on scrambles. There were as many designed QB runs as probably what you know a typical fan might see. I think a lot of it was not designed. So I think the running game's coming together in that way. It's just finding other areas to attack the opposing defenses. And I think the offensive line's playing great, or much better than they were, you know you know, probably a few weeks ago. So they're improving and they're coming together. The great thing to, for me, I think, to see today was that they did it against a three-man front. And the three-man front was probably what they ran into problem-wise against Oklahoma State and Baylor. I can see the breath coming out of D.Y.'s voice here. So I'm going to ask one more question here on the KSO Sunday Show and get us out of here, get us out of Lawrence for the evening. Huge game against Texas next week. The Longhorns, of course, one of the preseason big full of favorites. They don't look like one now. Kansas went down there and almost almost won. They lost 50-48. to 48. Sure I'm not asking for a prediction, but how big a game is this and how big of a chance does K-State have to go down to Austin and keep this thing rolling? I think every game's big the rest of the way, and, you know, this is significant. You can, I mean, 7-2 and two and – you know, have the conferences, you know, powerhouses, Texas and Oklahoma behind right. you would be a pretty good statement. I think the if you were going to gauge it against the past two weeks, I would say Oklahoma and Kansas more significant. But it's going to be a test next week because even though Texas has struggled in the past month, really, 
uh, they're going to be the healthiest they've been all year when Kansas State comes to town. So unfortunately for the Wildcats, they're probably going to get the best version of Texas and a better version of Texas than most of the other teams in the conference have faced so far. We're excited to cover it for you. I think we're going to Austin on Thursday. There's some high school football in that state that might be worth watching for us. We'll go do some of that. And then on Saturday, we'll be in Darrell K. Royal Memorial Stadium. I believe it's called uh, for the Wildcats and Longhorns, a huge game for both teams, of course. So thanks to Grant Flanders behind the camera for all his work today. To Logan Mance back at home, Chris Nelson, Jimmy Goheen, Derek Young, I guess, all who help us out. This is Matt Hall of Case It Online asking you to do me a favor and tell your friends fast. Don't.